Hello friends, this video on Atoms part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 14 before going ahead with part 15. Now let us look at problem 5. It asks, using the Bohr's model, calculate the speed of the electron in a hydrogen atom in n is equal to 1, 2 and 3 levels. Also calculate the orbital period in each of these levels. So now let us see according to Bohr's model. So as per Bohr's model, what is the radius? That is Bohr radius. Bohr radius is given as n square 8 square epsilon naught divided by pi m e square. Right? And what is the velocity of an electron? It is given as e divided by root over 4 pi epsilon naught r m. Right? So now let us try to calculate the speed of the electron for n is equal to 1, 2 and 3. Right? So in this case, v is equal to e divided by root over 4 pi epsilon naught m into 1 by root over r. Right? So here we can put the value of this r here. Right? So this becomes e divided by root over 4 pi epsilon naught m into pi m e into root over pi m divided by n h root over epsilon naught. So this comes out to be e square divided by n 2 epsilon naught h. So this comes out to be the value of v. Therefore for n is equal to 1, v becomes equal to e square divided by 2 epsilon naught h. Now we know the value of e is equal to, what is e? e is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. What is epsilon naught? It is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. What is h? It is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 34. So putting these three values, we calculate the value of v. For n is equal to 1, let me represent this v as v1. So this v1 comes out to be 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. Similarly, for the next energy level, that is n is equal to 2, v2 becomes equal to e square divided by n into 2 epsilon naught h. So here n will be equal to 2. So this is equal to 2 into 2 epsilon naught h. And this is basically the formula which we are using here. So this will be equal to e square divided by 4 epsilon naught h. So putting values in this we get 1.09 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. Similarly, for n is equal to 3, v3 becomes equal to e square divided by 6 epsilon naught h. So in this case again putting the values we get this value as 7.27 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second. Now once we have calculated the velocities, how can we calculate the orbital period? Orbital period is nothing but the time period to complete one orbit and one orbit is what? One orbit is one circle, right? That means what is the distance traveled? That is the circumference of the uh, circle. That is 2 pi r divided by the velocity of the electron. So therefore for n is equal to 1, t1 will be equal to 2 pi r1 divided by v1. So this will be equal to 2 pi by v1 into r1. r1 is n1 square h square epsilon naught divided by pi m e square. So v1 we have already calculated. So putting these values we get 2 pi into 1 square into 6.62 into 10 to the power minus 34 whole square into 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 divided by pi into 2.18 into 10 to the power 6 into 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 whole square. 
So on calculating this, it comes out to be 1.527 into 10 to the power minus 16 seconds. So this is the value of, this is the orbital period for n is equal to 1. Similarly, for n corresponding to 2, the corresponding orbital period will be equal to 2 pi r2 divided by v2. So this comes out to be 2 pi by v2 into r2 which is n2 square h square epsilon naught divided by pi m e square. So this value again comes out to be, we will put all the constants here. So the value comes out to be 1.22 into 10 to the power minus 15 seconds. So in similar way, for T3 it will be equal to 2 pi R3 divided by V3. This is equal to 2 pi by V3 into R3 which is N3 square, H square, epsilon naught divided by pi m e square. So this value comes out to be 4.12 into 10 to the power minus 15 seconds. So these are the orbital periods for n is equal to 1, 2 and 3 energy levels respectively. Let us look at the sixth problem. The problem says Radius of the innermost electron orbit of hydrogen atom is 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11 meters. What are the radii of the n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 3 orbits? So the radius for the innermost orbit is given as 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11 meters. Now here R1 is given as 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11 meters. We have to calculate the value of R2 and R3. Now from the expression of energy, we have seen that energy is inversely proportional to the radius R. Right, so energy is inversely proportional to R. And we have also seen that energy is inversely proportional to n square because energy is given by minus 13.6 by n square electron volt right so energy is inversely proportional to the radius energy is also inversely proportional to n square so from these two we can say that radius is directly proportional to n square correct so now using this relationship we can say that if r1 is given as this much so for this R1, the corresponding value of n is n1. So for this, the corresponding value of n is n2. For this, the corresponding value of n is n3. And in this problem, n1 is given as 1 because it is the innermost orbit. n2 is 2, second orbit and n3 is equal to 3. Now using this relationship, we can say that R1 by R2 is equal to n1 square by n2 square. So from this we can say r2 is equal to n2 square by n1 square into r1. What is n2? That is 2. So 2 square divided by 1 square into r1. That is 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11. So this comes out to be 2.12 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters. Similarly, we can say that R1 by R3 is equal to N1 square by N3 square or we can say R3 is equal to N3 square by N1 square into R1. So this is equal to 3 square into R1 which is 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11. So this comes out to be 4.77 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters. So these are the values of the radii of n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 3 orbits respectively. Now let us look at the last problem for this lesson. In accordance with the Bohr's model, find the quantum number that characterizes the Earth's revolution around the Sun in an orbit of radius 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 meters with an orbital speed of 3 into 10 to the power 4 meter per second. 
mass of the earth is given as 6 into 10 to the power 24 kgs. So it says that we have to assume that the earth's revolution around the sun is in accordance with the Bohr's model. So what does the Bohr's model say? The Bohr's model says that at, to, as per Bohr's model, the electron is the earth and the nucleus is the sun. So the electron is revolving around the nucleus in this way. So Bohr's model says that in as long as this electron is in one energy level, the angular momentum is an integral multiple of h by pi. That means it says that mvr is equal to nh by 2 pi. This is true as per Bohr's postulate. So from this, which is the quantum number here? This n is the principal quantum number which is involved there. So we can calculate the value of n as 2 pi mvr divided by h. So we can say 2 pi into m is mass of the earth that is 6 into 10 to the power 24 into v is 3 into 10 to the power 4 into r is the radius that is 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 divided by h which is Planck's constant that is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 34. So this value of n comes out to be 2.6 into 10 to the power 74. So this is the quantum number that characterizes the revolution of the earth around the sun. So I hope that solving these problems have, uh, may have helped you to understand how we apply the concepts that we have studied in this lesson uh, in solving problems. However, this chapter was uh, more focused on uh, the theory rather than problems. That is, this chapter talked mostly about the structure of an atom. So it is more of understanding rather than just uh, solving problems. So I hope I was able to give you some idea on atoms. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.